Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to show you how could we estimate and meet liquidity needs for banks. And this is the solution of problem one in the worksheet. You are provided with the following sources and uses of fund statement for ZL Bank. The first question, calculate the estimated change in loans, deposits from month to month, as well as the liquidity needs or the estimated liquidity needs. To be able to answer this question, we need to add three more columns to this table. So estimated the change in total loans, estimated the change in total deposits, and finally the estimated liquidity needs. To determine the estimated change in total loans for the month of June, we need to have those of May. And since the estimated total loans and estimated total deposits for May are unknown, so we cannot know the change in total loans and total deposits and also the liquidity needs. That's why they are unknown. So regarding the month of July, to determine the estimated change in total loans, so it's the 190,000 minus the 180,000. Of course, regarding the estimated change in total deposits, it's the 180 minus the 190,000. So it would be equal to, for the change in loans, 10,000 plus 10,000, and the estimated change in total deposits, it is minus 10,000. To determine the liquidity needs, it is the estimated change in total loans minus the estimated change in total deposits. So 10,000 minus, minus the 10,000, it will be equal to 20,000. Regarding the months of August, it is the 210 minus the 190, so 20, and 190 minus the 180, so it is 10, so uh, 20 minus the 10,000 would be equal to 10,000, and we should fill the uh, all the columns in the same way. Let's move now to question 2 and 3. In which months does the bank has excess liquidity and in which months does the bank has a deficient liquidity? To determine the excess liquidity or the deficient liquidity, we need to look at the last column, the estimated liquidity needs. When the estimated liquidity needs are positive, so we say that the bank has a deficient liquidity. And when it is negative, we say that the bank has an excess liquidity or a surplus in liquidity. And when it is zero, like the months of December, we say that the bank has a sufficient liquidity. It has neither an excess and nor a deficiency. So in July, deficiency, August also, and as well as September, in October, we have an excess, and also in November. And in December, we have a sufficient liquidity. So to answer question two and three, to answer question two, first of all, we say that in both October and November, the bank has an excess liquidity. And to answer question three, we say that in July, August, and September, the bank, the bank has a deficient liquidity. Let's move to question four. What can the bank do in both cases? Explain. The excess liquidity, it can be loaned out to other institutions. So we can give this excess liquidity to other institutions using what? First of all, we have the federal funds or using repurchase agreements or invested in longer term securities. So in this case, we can use this excess liquidity and have a profit from it. Regarding the deficiency, it can be covered by using either, first of all, the asset liquidity by, for example, selling of short term securities or the liability management by issuing of certificates of deposits at competitive 
market interest rates. So whenever you face such a question, you have to write these two statements. Finally, the question five, given the following estimated sources of liquidity, calculate the ratio of estimated liquidity sources to liquidity needs. So they are giving us the estimated asset liquidity and the estimated liability liquidity. Because as previously mentioned, when we have a deficiency, we can use either asset liquidity or liability liquidity. So during the month of June, we have $3,000 from the asset liquidity and $5,000 from the liability liquidity. So let's see how could we calculate this ratio. To determine the ratio of the liquidity sources to liquidity needs, we need to determine the liquidity sources and liquidity needs. Regarding the liquidity needs, they, are, they were already calculated towards the last column of question number one. And that's it. Regarding the liquidity sources, we have the estimated asset liquidity and the estimated liability liquidity given in question five. So the liquidity sources is not more than summing up these two liquidities. So regarding, so the total liquidity, it's the summation of asset liquidity plus liability liquidity. And now regarding the liquidity ratio, it is the column number two, named two, divided by the column which is named number one. So for the month of June, we have 3,000 plus the 5,000, so it's 8,000. So 8,000 divided by nothing because we don't know the estimated liquidity needs in June. So we cannot determine the liquidity ratio for the first month. Now regarding the month of July, it is 4 plus 10, so it's 14,000. 14,000 divided by the 20 thousands so it would be equal to 0 0.7 august five, 4 plus 5 so 9 9 divided by the 10 thousands it would be equal to 0 0.9 and so on for the other months or the remaining months now how could we interpret this ratio in july September, sorry, August and September, we say that the bank has a poten potential liquidity problem. Why? Because the ratios are between 0 and 1. As you can see, during the months of July, August and September, we cannot say that the bank has an excess liquidity because it has 14 thousands li total liquidity and it needs 20 thousands total uh, liquidity needs as a result it has a shortage in liquidity as well as in uh, during august it has only nine thousands liquidity however it needs ten thousands now regarding october and november the bank has an excess liquidity since the ratios are negative. So when ratios are negative, we say that the bank has excess liquidity. And when they are between zero and one, we say that the bank has a deficient liquidity or a potential liquidity problem.